Hey everyone and welcome back to another video in this series where I'm trying to create my first game from scratch. It's a physics based boxing game with a little bit of arcadiness and humor added into it. Things are coming along great and we're finally closing in on the finish line for this game. Although everybody seems to think that I've quit. I haven't quit. It takes time to make games guys. <laughs> but here I am finally back with another video and this time we're gonna be creating some levels from a game which I'm really excited about. The game as it is is pretty much almost uh, done I would say. We have some really fun opponents we can fight against. You can play against a friend locally not online but we'll see about that. I have a few more opponents I'd like to do, but everything is pretty much working. We've got a menu and it's all great. The one thing we don't have is a variety in the levels. So currently all we really have is a boxing ring standing on a grid in an empty space, which is great for playtesting, but not very fun when you're actually playing the game. But I also need to remember that uh, I am a one man show. I can only do so much. So we're going to have to get creative and make sure that I can actually produce levels without it taking too much time. So that's definitely going to be a challenge. One thing that's working in my favor, though, is the camera angle we currently have. So we're looking from above down onto the boxers. We only really need to create stuff in this area right around the ring and the rest will sort of be up to the player's imagination to just imagine what might be beyond what you can see. I've started collecting ideas and reference images in my Milanote document. Milanote is the organization application that I'm using to pretty much organize my entire game and they were also kind enough again to sponsor this video. Thank you so much to Milanote, a huge shout out for continuously contributing to this channel. For those of you that are returning viewers, you've probably already seen me using Milanote several times in my videos, but for those of you who are new, Milanote is a great app for organizing your projects. I mainly use it to gather reference images, writing down ideas, making to-do lists, and also when I'm about to tackle something complicated in terms of game design, I tend to sketch it out in Milanote first and then I can use that as a reference for when I'm actually implementing it in the game. It's just so much quicker than working directly in Unreal Engine because things tend to get a little bit confusing in there if you know what I mean. They also have a huge variety of different templates you can start out from so you don't have to create anything from scratch. But anyways, please show Milanote some love for supporting the channel check them out for your next project you can get started completely for free using the link in my description you really have nothing to lose go for it make some cool stuff and uh, let me know on twitter what you think about it anyways back to the video the part that terrifies me the most is by far creating some sort of a crowd or spectators i did make an attempt at this way back I'm not happy with the result, I don't think it makes any sense, and more importantly, I don't want to have to worry about animating all these guys. So I'm trying something a little simpler this time around. Now you might think that this might be a little bit too simple, but don't worry, I've got a plan. First off, I'd like to make these blobs look a little bit more mysterious and a little less blobby. But because they're currently being lit by the same lights that are lighting my boxing ring, there's not really much I can do. If I change the lighting, I would also change it on the boxing ring. And I quite like the lighting on the boxing ring, so I want to keep that. So to fix this, I'm going to try and create my own shader. It's going to be very simple, but I think it might do the trick. I'll start off with a Fresnel component. It's pretty simple. Geometry that is facing the camera will turn black, and geometry that is pointing away from the camera will turn white. Okay, maybe that still doesn't make sense. Let's just look at the final result. You get something like this. You can see how around the edges of the object we get white and then it fades off into black in the middle. Now multiplying this with a height map kind of makes it look a little bit like the blob is being backlit from above, which is exactly what I want. And putting this in the scene, it's already looking a lot better, a lot more mysterious. And the fun thing with this is that it kind of gives the illusion that no matter what angle you're looking at the blob from, it always looks backlit, which I think is working pretty well in this case. However, it doesn't look like they're having a lot of fun. So I'd like to see if we can add just a little bit of life to our blobs. Now to all you animators out there, uh, don't look. <laughs> I made a couple of small little animations for our blobs. Probably not the most impressive work I've ever done, but I'm hoping we can make something out of this. By randomly combining all these animations across all our blobs, I feel like, surprisingly, this actually does the job. 
to improve a little bit on this, I wanted to see if it would be possible for me to be able to add some sort of an excitement meter. And with a little bit of thinking, a whole day to be precise, I managed to come up with a little system where if I move the excitement slider up, the crowd starts moving faster and more violently. And if I put it back down, they get less excited. I'm hoping to use this where if you're landing a lot of punches or anything like that, the crowd gets more excited. And if not a lot is happening in the match, they kind of get bored. I think we're in a really good spot with our first level and I figured maybe there'd be some photographers back there in the audience. So I created a quick little material based on noise that sort of looks like smoke that I can scale and move around in the scene however I want. And by just turning them on and off randomly out in the audience, it kind of makes it look like somebody was taking a photo. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it works pretty well. What do you think? I don't want to overthink things too much. I think our first level is looking pretty good and definitely resembles a boxing arena. I have a lot of other ideas for levels that I want to do and we're already six minutes into this video, so let's move on. I've been really looking forward to creating a special level for our sumo boss. <laughs> I'm thinking I want to create something that looks more like a sumo ring, so it's as if we're stepping into a proper sumo fight this time. I guess the two biggest differences between a boxing ring and a sumo ring is the fact that a sumo ring is actually a ring, not a square. But also, it doesn't have any ropes, and I thought that could be a fun little thing to add to our game. So basically, in this level, if you fall off, you dead. I found this cool texture on Mega Scans, which looks like some sort of sand or something. People have been walking around and didn't just a little bit of this stuff around here and it kind of looks like a sumo ring, I think. I thought it'd be kind of cool to add some sort of uh, dustiness to this one as well. Now to create this dust, I know there are some built-in features in Unreal Engine, like height, fog and stuff. Um, hmm. I don't really know how those work, so I decided to build something of my own instead. We can use the depth buffer for this that the engine gives us and just simply manipulate this as if it was a gradient in Photoshop. After some tinkering with this, I came up with something like this. You set a point for where you want your fog or haze to begin and where you want it to basically turn completely opaque and then you get a linear kind of gradient between that, kind of giving the illusion that what you're looking at is a hazy room. I can also set how smoothly the transition goes from no haze to full haze. Not really sure how useful that is, but I thought it was a fun feature to add. I'm feeling pretty good about this result. It's not the most complicated thing in the world, but I think it does the trick and it keeps things simple, which I like. At least it's a lot easier to use than the height fog thing in Unreal Engine, so take that. Ha! I also tried spawning in some simple sand particles when they lift up their feet as if they're kicking up some dust and dirt. After all, they are walking around on sand, so it seemed appropriate. The next level I want to tackle is for our monk. I'm getting a little bored of dark environments, so I wanted to switch it up and place this one up on a mountaintop. I'm envisioning that we're up nearby some temple situated on a high mountain in a rocky mountainy place. I think you get the idea. While I love to model rocks, I wanted to just quickly take a peek at the Megascans library and make sure that there weren't any rocks in there before I get started. As it turns out, there are rocks. A lot of them. I found a couple of favorites. I don't think I'll be needing more than a couple of rocks. I find that you can generally get away with using even just one rock for these type of things. You just have to get a little creative by moving it around, scaling it and rotating it in different ways. And I don't think anybody will notice that it's the same rock. People are so easy to fool. <laughs> okay. So apart from the fact that it looks like we're in outer space, I think I think we're pretty good here. What we're missing is some sort of atmosphere, you know, like a sky, some haze. So, of course, I stupidly gave Unreal's built-in height fog another go and, again, couldn't really get it to work properly. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure it works, I'm just not smart enough to figure it out. So, I decided to give the little fog material I created for the sumo level another shot to see if maybe that could help us out in this situation. So, by just increasing the distance a little bit and making the fog a bit bluish and a lot brighter, it kind of sells the illusion that we're up on a high mountain where the air is thin and we've got a lot of mist. I also tried reusing the little smoke noise thing we created to see if that could give the feeling that we have some clouds floating around. 
Although this is a complete cheat, as you can tell, I feel like this really works and it really sells the idea. Especially when you're in action and you're fighting, you really don't pay too much attention back there, but I still think, you know, basically, my very modest opinion about my work is that it looks absolutely amazing. I also need to create some sort of training environment, like a boxing gym or something like that, where the player can practice punches and blocking and all that stuff. I've been gathering some references for this, and I gave it my best shot with creating something interesting, and well... Okay, I know, it looks really terrible, I know guys. It, I'm not super proud of this one, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> But this one, uh, I don't really know what to do with it. I actually kind of preferred the grid as a floor. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I've just gotten used to it. But it looks a little bit like temporary. And it's like it's in progress. Just like the player is practicing. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of like these uh, dummies hanging around here. But I definitely made a mess out of this one. And I'm not quite sure how to solve it. Maybe you guys have some good ideas. Basically, what I'm saying is I need some help with this one. But the real reason I'm bringing this level up is because I've been secretly working on a tutorial for the game so hopefully you won't mind taking a quick detour in this video. I think you guys will really enjoy it so let's take a look. We'll get back to making more levels really soon, I promise. This boxing game I'm making is pretty difficult and is in dire need of some instructions of how to properly play it. So I figured we need a seasoned veteran to really show you the ropes around the ring. Now he might not look like a boxing champion now, but trust me, back in the day he was not that impressive either. But it, hey, you gotta take what you get, right? Since I was having a lot of problems when I created clothing for the monk a couple of episodes ago, I figured let's do more. So I struggled for a few days at trying to make some sort of a shirt for coach. Eventually it turned out fine, I think, but this is definitely not my area of expertise and I will avoid it like the plague moving forward. I still have a couple of issues here and there though, where you can see through to the skin in certain places, and I wasn't really sure what to do with that, but after a lot of thinking, I came up with what I think is a pretty good solution. See, Coach is really, really poor, and he can't afford new clothes, and therefore he has a lot of holes in his shirt. Make sense? I wanted to make sure that the tutorial is an enjoyable part of the game and not just a necessary boring for the player. A big part of that will be to give our coach some personality. However, since our characters don't have faces, that's gonna be a little tricky. I figured maybe I could use his glasses as a way of conveying some emotions and bring some life into our old coach. I'm quite happy with this, it's a bit silly, but I think it adds to the humor of the game. I'm not gonna bore you with the entire tutorial, I'll leave that for you to play once I release the game, but I think it's a really important part of the game, so I'm super happy to have this done, and it also took me more than a month to put all of this together, so I figured I owe you guys some sort of explanation for why I've been gone for so long, and well, this is it. <laughs> Anyways, I think we've all had quite enough of this grumpy old guy, so how about we get back to making some more levels, huh? The final opponent in our amateur series is our Viking, so I think it's appropriate that he gets his own level. I'm thinking some sort of Viking hut with fires and wood pillars and stuff like that. Heading back to the Megascans library, I found some really cool wood beams that I thought would be appropriate for this level. We don't need a lot here, I just want to give the sense that we're in some sort of wooden old structure. I also really wanted some fire in this level, but I don't know how to do fire, which is a slight problem. After a few hours of tinkering with the particle system, I came up with something like this, which quite terrible, I know, <laughs> but I really don't want to spend any more time on it, so we're gonna have to work with this somehow. I do, however, have another genius solution for this problem. If we just pretend like the fire is, uh, you know, somewhere maybe down here, strategically behind this piece of thing, we can see the fire, which means that we can't see the problem. You know, you gotta learn to work within your limitations, you know what I mean? And I think just the mere light and the fog and the little embers coming off the fire is enough to sort of make you feel like there's a fire over there. Well, I'm quite happy with this. I think it looks pretty cool. I feel like there's still something missing. I wanted to make something really special for this one because, you know, I'm a Viking, I'm Swedish. What really feels out of place right now is the boxing ring. So I wanted to take the time here and see if we could do something a little special for this one. So starting off, I wanted to replace these colorful pads with maybe some wooden planks. Again, mega scans to the rescue. And then if we could also replace the ropes with, well, ropes, just, you know, different looking ropes. You know what I'm talking about. I think that's really cool. 
And for the ground, I'm using the same sand we used for the sumo level, but I'm wondering if we should try something a little different here. Like, I'm thinking maybe some sort of wooden planks or something like that. I'm not sure whether the sand or this is better, or maybe we need something completely different. Hmm. <laughs> I'm having a hard time making up my mind on this one. What do you think? Anyways, I'm feeling really happy with our little viking hut. I do wonder if it's perhaps a touch dark, although I do feel like it adds a lot to the atmosphere with the fire and the smoke. It is also the last opponent in this series, so I do want it to feel a little bit more dangerous than the other levels. Uh, and I think that is going to be a problem for future Ponty. I've also tried a few other level ideas, like I was thinking it could be fun to have some sort of a beach level with palm trees. I wasn't sure which boss this would be suitable for though, uh, and I'm not sure that I'm quite happy with the result. I might just need to put in a little bit of extra work to make this one work, but I wasn't sure if it should be a part of the game or not. Maybe it'll just be like a multiplayer map you can unlock or something like that. But if you do come up with a fun boss idea that we could put in our beach level, then do let me know. Another idea I thought could be fun would be some sort of an infinity level where you don't have any ropes at all and you can just keep walking forever. I haven't quite come up with which boss to put in this level yet, but I'm thinking it's going to be some sort of a late game mysterious boss. I don't know, something mysterious. There are of course a few more levels that I'd like to do, but I feel like we're off to a great start and I'm really hitting my stride with these levels and it's becoming quite quick to make them actually. If you have any good ideas for levels, then please let me know. And if you haven't wishlisted Punch a Bunch on Steam yet, and please forgive me for the Steam page. I know it looks awful. I will update it soon. But anyways, if you wouldn't mind heading over there and giving it a wishlist, it would really help me out a lot. And of course, if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe to the channel. And to all of you out there struggling to make your own games, just remember, never don't give up. Oh, and don't forget to check out Milano for your next project. Use my link below to get started completely for free. You won't regret it. It's going to blow you away. That's it for me for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. If you want to connect, you know, Twitter, Discord, whatever you prefer. See you in the next video. Bye bye.